The most prolific filmmaker in the sport of skiing, Warren Miller, once said that a pair of skis are the ultimate transformation to freedom. It's a quote that has always stuck with me. My name is Chris Winters. I travel the world to experience skiing in remote regions and to connect with the local culture. We're about to go ski a beautiful line of Kazakhstan powder. I had an idea for a docu-series called Snow Hunters to investigate the origins of skiing through the indigenous communities who continue to practice an ancient form of the activity. My hope was to learn from the past to simplify the modern snow sports industry, which has lost its way. Once a tool for travel and survival in harsh winter climates, skiing has evolved into an elite recreational sport accessible only to those who can afford the increasingly expensive lift tickets and equipment. Our first episode would take us to China, a country quickly becoming the future of skiing. Leading up to the 2022 Winter Olympic Games in Beijing, there has been a massive push by the Chinese government to develop the world's most robust ski economy. But less known, there is evidence that the first skiers in the world originated in what is now Western China thousands of years ago. In the remote Altai mountain range, there is an indigenous community still practicing a traditional form of skiing as a customary way of life similar to that of their ancestors. By returning to the roots of skiing and better understanding their culture, I hope to show how modern skiing could be more connected to nature and accessible to more people. After spending nearly two years researching and preparing, I assembled a top-notch team of skiers and snowboarders, and I couldn't wait to get the project started. The first stop for me was Beijing, a city I knew very well. Having lived and worked there when I was younger, it was a perfect place to start the journey. <laughs> I was joined there by Caitlin Farrington, an Olympic gold medal snowboarder from Idaho. Caitlin Farrington moves into the gold medal position here in the Olympic final. Caitlin's professional experience and engaging personality made her a natural fit for the team. Oh my gosh, I love it. I'm so happy to be in China. Heard about the project, I was very intrigued just because I loved the thought of going through the history of skiing and just thought it was a really cool kind of adventure. Our trip coincided with the Chinese New Year, one of the biggest holidays on the planet. Yes! Such a good feeling. <laughs> Those are the straight cats. Hello! <laughs> this is Beijing Duck. <laughs> After a few days in Beijing, we boarded a flight to Urumqi, the capital of Xinjiang province, on the far west of China. Once a major hub on the Silk Road, which linked Asia and the Western world, Urumqi is a cross-section of cultures, languages, and religions. Here we would meet up with the last member of our crew, Brennan Lagasse, an international ski guide and college professor from Lake Tahoe, California. Brennan's ability to navigate almost any terrain and extensive knowledge of indigenous cultures made him a true asset to the team. What attracts me to learning more about these ancient forms of skiing is understanding the roots of the cultural aspect of skiing. And I uh, really wanted to check that out. The last leg of our flights would take us to Altai City, located on the border of Kazakhstan, Mongolia, and Siberia. In 1996, an ancient cave painting was found in the mountains, which depict what some consider to be the first representation of humans on skis. We are now at the site, just far away from everything. You can imagine a nomadic tribe putting up shop here for a, a winter and um, drawing paintings of what their daily life was like. 
So those are the first skiers ever recorded. This goes back what they say to be over 10,000 years old, which is kind of revealing about how long the ski has been part of the culture both here and potentially throughout Eurasia. Really breathtaking to be here. Um, glad I could uh, make it all the way out and you know, be part of this origins of skiing. After visiting the cave, we made the five hour drive into the snowy Alti Mountains in order to reach our final destination, the tiny village of Combe. Rural and slow paced, with a focus on family and tradition, Combe embraces its rich history, including snow skiing. He's very happy to meet you guys and uh, talk to you guys. Us, us too. We just go to he says it's also the second day of spring festival. <laughs> we were invited to a traditional Kazakh horse race, one of the first scheduled events during the five days of celebrations. Now we're cooking. <laughs> As we watched the riders loop the snowy track on these stunning horses, we would later learn just how much this sacred animal means to the locals. Yeah, I didn't realize how like... Woo. Yeah, team. This like, is the crowd, dude. This is such a That's the Olympic mascot. Yeah. This is very cool. Yeah. What a beautiful, beautiful place. Malchin, a traditional skiing legend, would be our guide. He took us to see the time-honored tradition of ski making, comb style. To get there, we took full advantage of the villagers' ride-sharing system. <whistles> Malchin and the community of Combe are working to ensure that the ways of their ancestors will not be forgotten. First, a fallen tree is gathered, split, and shaped into two rough planks. The planks are then carved by hand using an assortment of tools. The finished planks are then augmented by the hides of their horses, thus maximizing resources with limited waste. Mother Nature providing all the parts that these people need for their skis seem to stand in sharp contrast to the complexities of modern day skiing and the reliance on expensive gear and equipment. When I heard that there were people that were still practicing this traditional form of skiing that dates back thousands of years and kind of signaled this idea that, you know, skiing isn't necessarily this thing that it means to a lot of people in modern culture, this really elitist sort of model that we've come to see of $200 lift tickets and fancy gear, this and that. It was really like skiing was born out of necessity to support one's community and it really informed culture. Now that we had our new skis, it was time to learn how to use them. Yeah. Two times. Melchin showed the team how to tie our boots into the delicate yet durable bindings made of thin leather strips. 
yeah. and how to use a single wooden pole for both propulsion and balance. So you lean back yeah. into it. Yeah. I'd never thought that I'd be in Western China learning how to ski on horse, horse hair pretty much. I can't believe it, it's crazy. It's gonna be interesting going downhill. Yeah. <laughs> Employing a free heel, the horsehair skins on the bottom of the ski allowed the user to both climb uphill and glide down. With our training complete, we headed to the slopes, where our real lesson would begin. Oh, Here we go! Oh, yes! oh, 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 oh. The traditional skis were unlike anything our team had ever used before. The experience brought our different cultures together with a shared purpose, connecting with nature and each other through skiing. This is my best one yet! Yeah, that's intense! And well, just having fun playing in the snow. Yeah. 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 Awesome, that was a good one. <laughs> yeah! Oh, nice. So, yeah. Malchin and his friends were certainly having an easier go. Yeah, dude. Our time together really put things in perspective about the true origins of the sport and what skiing still means to the people of Kong. In more modern skiing, we do this for fun. It brings us a lot of joy. We do it all the time. And for you, did you do this for fun or was it traditionally for another purpose? <laughs> Your daughter is really good at traditional skiing. How important is it for you to pass this on? Yeah, that was super awesome. I'm so fortunate to be here and learn from the master Malchin. It's such a beautiful art and it's such a practical purpose to be able to build your own skis and go out and do the amazing things they do out in the countryside here. Hopefully someday I'll be able to make a whole pair by myself and go off and continue traditional skiing elsewhere in the world. So super, super fun. Awesome. Thanks, Machin. Okay, okay. <laughs> After a great day on the mountain, Malchin was kind enough to invite us over for a traditional holiday dinner. It was only once we were seated at the table, happily sipping our milk tea, that we realized the meal consisted of just about every part of a horse you can imagine. Delicious. It's really, it's just so different. Like, what is this part of it? Really good. Wow. <laughs> While not a cuisine we typically eat in the West, horse meat is served here during special celebrations, and it brought the day's experience full circle for our team. Martin just told me that the horse that he used for this will also become a ski. Oh, cool. How about an onion? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe some intestines? Nope. No. <laughs> Hold them in. <laughs> After the elaborate dinner, 
The evening culminated in the traditional cracking open of a horse leg bone, which was then passed around the table so everyone could suck out some of the marrow. Can I eat that? I want to This was an experience our team would not soon forget, particularly for me as a vegan. <laughs> it was a special moment for Malchin and his family who seemed particularly excited to have an Olympic gold medal winner in their home. Can I put this on you? Whoa. Can I wear this one? Yeah. <laughs> Hanging with Malchin's kids and not being able to communicate the same language, it is just really interesting, but once you bring out an Olympic <laughs> medal, it grounds everybody, it brings everyone together. <laughs> After all the planning and preparation, it felt amazing to finally be here, taking part in this ancient tradition. We look forward to the days ahead where we would learn much more about the culture of Qom, as well as ski tour some of the mountains towering over the town. Officials in China are dealing with a major health crisis. It's from the same family that caused the deadly SARS epidemic. In a significant development, the Chinese capital has reported its first death caused by the new virus. Authorities have cancelled New Year celebrations as fears about the spread of a deadly new virus grow. The sudden outbreak of the coronavirus on the other side of China prompted the village of Qom to cancel all of the remaining events. A countrywide lockdown was going into effect, and we were told that we would need to evacuate the village immediately, or we risk being stranded there for the foreseeable future. Our team scrambled to book travel arrangements, but to make matters worse, multiple avalanches had taken out the mountain passes just outside the village. Over the next several hours, through a monumental group effort, a local crew plowed 30 kilometers of tunnels through heavy snow so that we can make our way to the airport. <laughs> Once we arrived, the team dispersed and boarded whatever flights we could find to get us out of the country and safely back home. After planning the trip for over a year and setting some lofty production goals, everything had come to a grinding halt after just one day I'm happy that I'm healthy. I'm happy that I'll be seeing family and that we will um, be able to kind of decompress this project and figure out what to do next with uh, the story. As the world would go into a lockdown with the spread of COVID, people everywhere were forced to adjust to a new way of life. A normally frenzied world suddenly slowed down. Many took the opportunity to grow their own food and to consume in their local community. People started flocking to the great outdoors again for connectivity and recreation. With ski resorts closed, enthusiasts returned to the roots of the sport, traversing mountainsides by foot in order to experience the thrill of the ride down. Much like our time with Malchin in Com, perhaps this global experience can show us how a simpler lifestyle can serve as a pathway to a more responsible and enlightened future. <laughs>